This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Well, that happened. Left us with more questions than we got answers. That's kind of usual, I think. When you take a walk like this, you realize just how wide of a range of shops there are in this town. Just for food, you've got butchers, fishmongers, greengrocers, and convenience stores. There's even two large supermarkets on either side of the station. Oh, yeah, I, I freaking love this psalm. In the town I was living in before, there was, of course, a shopping area. But and its scale was adequate to avoid any problems with my daily life, but... It was overall a pretty compact district, and most of the stores were small family-owned businesses. Doesn't even bear comparison to what you find in a town fairly close to the metropolitan area like this one. I don't intend to estimate the wealth of the town by its facade alone, but... Looking at the number of chic retailers on clothes, jewelry, and other non-essential luxury goods, you'll naturally get an idea that this place is relatively high-class population. So, as for what I'm currently doing in this affluent town... I had been on my way to buy curtains for my windows, heading to a hardware store that Amine told me about. Has been. Right. Past tense. I noticed a certain abnormality about ten minutes ago. Specifically, someone was on my tail. I'd fought my imagination, might have been acting up at first. But when I abruptly changed my course just to be safe, they came charging after me in a panic. There's no way this is a coincidence. There are free pursuers. Since they're following me in a group, rather than dispersed individually, it's incredibly easy to tell. Pretending to look into the show window of a watch shop along the street, I casually glanced at their faces. But they weren't familiar in the slightest, and for a group with a grudge against my workplace, they seemed far too sloppy and dim-witted. Basically, they just looked like a bunch of juvenile delinquents. Although naughty lads like that exist in any town, it feels like you actually find more of them in well-off places like this, and they tend to be of a particularly ugly variety. They say the poor can't afford manners, but I find that living in a place where everything you need is dropped into your lap tends to twist people in its own way. Very true. Forget about the hard work, and it's easy to fall into the warped ways of thinking. Very true. Well then, what to do? What reason would they have for following me around? Although I've been thinking it over for a while, nothing is coming to mind. In which case, it would probably be best to ask them directly. Guess I'll lure them into some nice dark alley. Looking around my surroundings perfectly casually, I'm startled when something unexpected catches my eye. Oh, hey, Makina. Shit. Why did she have to appear at this of all times? No, it's nothing. Are you alone? Where's Amine? I keep forgetting that she's not actually eight years old. Amine said that? Cheeky girl. Well, what can I do about this shrimp? At this rate, she might get mixed up in this. I thrust my hand into the rear pocket of my school uniform and pull out three 10,000 yen notes rolled up with a rubber band. You're giving a free hundred dollars? It's hot today, isn't it, Makina? Feel like some ice cream? I mean, she might technically be 15, but she looks, sounds, and acts 8. So... There's nothing wrong with me. I have voiced extreme displeasure in it going on her route, especially if it's a romantic route. Like, I don't want to do that. The fact that you, like, you just slap on, no, she's 15, but she still looks and acts like this, doesn't make things really any better. What Amine doesn't know won't hurt her. I really want ice cream. Can you go buy some? Please, I'll explain it to Amine so she won't get mad at you, okay? I take Makina's hand and forcibly close it around the 30,000 yen. Really? Then go ahead and use the change to dabble in the stock market. <laughs> anyway, ice cream! Head on over to Baskin Robinson on the other side of the station. Make mine a caramel ribbon. Double or triple or whatever is fine. Just get what you want. Stop being so loud, Makina. What? Because I'm too embarrassed to go into that place. Come on, get going. <laughs> Look, 
I am not your man, okay? Do not call me that. That was a lot of words. Amine say that? Cheeky girl. Uh, with who? Well, watch you not gonna trot off with the money clench in her hand. I exhale slowly. <sighs> the bunch following me doesn't show any signs of chasing after Makina and her money. In other words, they're not after me for my cash. If it's not a robbery, I guess that would leave a personal grudge or some sort of class resentment. Either way, not a particularly welcome situation. Well, whatever. After watching Makina disappear, I find an alley between a cleaner's and a liquor store, and casually turn into it as if taking a shortcut. Oi, Oh, are we actually getting an action scene now? He's man A. That means he's the leader. Oh man, let's just let them beat. Let's just wait and let them beat themselves up. Oh, hey. <laughs> oh, they they look pleasant, don't they? <laughs> Those look like just a couple of friendly guys who want to take us out for ice cream. You know? <laughs> oh, boy. Interesting. Hey there. Where <laughs> Hmm? Ah, behind those beer cases. You need something? It, it is another guy wearing a Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> but it's a different guy, but it's the same Hawaiian shirt. Uh oh, they know where we go to school. Yeah, it is. What about it? You know, as you do. Why would you do that? <laughs> they seem like well-adjusted individuals, don't they? Hey now, you're scaring me. Please stop. I can't stand violence. Who hired you? Job? Uh-oh. We've got a knife, a lead pipe, and a fox taser. This just got worse. <laughs> In an apparent attempt to intimidate me, the man fires a flashy burst of sparks from the stun gun in his hand. Oh, it's a stun gun, even worse. The discharge of electrical energy scorches particles of dust in the atmosphere. A burning smell fills the air, pricking the depths of my nose. I close my eyes. In the next moment, a siren rings out in my head. I'm in pouring rain, pushing through the mud at my feet and the taste of iron spreading from my mouth. Hiding my body from the light of the flares, a knife died black in my hand, swallowing down my heart as if it tries to leap out of my mouth. If you want to protect something, first protect yourself. Hmm. It seems the time has come to make use of my super self-defense technique. As the man raises his stun gun and takes a fighting stance, I draw a huge breath into my lungs. And reading out my voice to the limit, I scream, HELP ME! Damn it. Who's looking up? <laughs> oh, interesting. He's calling for help. Someone help! Call the police! <laughs> the man's stun gun discharges a threatening pale bluish arc of electricity in my general direction. I reach out and gently grasp his out thrust hand as if trying to shake. Well, I guess that's about what you'd expect. In this narrow alley, all three of us can't all three can't attack me at once. Maybe he planned for this sort of cramped space, or maybe it's just a coincidence from prioritizing ease of concealment. Either way, the iron pipe in the man with the black tank top's hand is cut very short, not very well suited for disabling me with a single blow. That said, the guy next to him with the knife isn't much use either. It might look da the most dangerous of the bunch at a glance, but a weapon like that is actually a hindrance if he's not planning to kill me. 
<laughs> yeah, I'd... it's an interesting self-defense technique, just screaming for help instead of actually, like, fighting them. But, you know what? Maybe that's more realistic. In this situation, the flashiest, easiest-to-use weapon is also the most effective. The stun gun can stop me dead with a single attack. The ideal would be to fire off a single shot to eliminate my mobility and then crush my fighting spirit, then have all three surround me and beat me senseless. Damn it! Uh, no, I've got five girls. Now that that's just rude, I don't go around holding hands with men for the fun of it. Though it looks like a casual white grasp, the truth is I've got to vi hold on a vital point of the hand he's holding the stun gun with. When I put pressure on this exact spot, he can't push or pull as long as he's maintaining his grip. If he were to pull back hard using the weight of his body, he could rip his hand free. But if I'm controlling his center of gravity as well, that's sadly not an option. It's not like I'm grabbing you that hard. You just like the monkey with his hand. You're you're just like the monkey with his hand stuck in the jar. Might as well just drop the banana, right? At my words, the man's firm grip on his stun gun weakens for just an instant. In the moment I feel the loosening of his proximal phalanx bones, I twist his wrist sharply upward. And dig my thumb hard into the side of his hand. Yeah! Ouch. By first extending the joints of his wrist, then attacking them with the pinpoint pressure of my finger, I've completely disabled his ability to maintain a grip. The stun gun slips out of his hand. Whoops. Catching the stun gun as it falls from the man's hand, I jerk his arm upward to immobilize his elbow joint. Then push him hard against the pile of beer cases stacked along the wall. <laughs> and just like that, these two realized... They messed up. <laughs> I mashed the man's face against the beer cases while maintaining my incapacitating wrist hold. In the next moment, I pushed the stun gun against the scruff of his neck to throw the switch without hesitation. One down. Here. Catch. As the next man raises his short iron pipe above his head like a hammer, I abruptly toss the stun gun in its direction. The man reaches out in a panic to try to receive the stun gun. Been a while since I've had such a bunch of clowns. I kick my knee sharply into his virtually defenseless abdomen. Ooh, yeah. Instantly doubling over his belly in an instinctive attempt to protect the place he's been attacked, the man's chin sticks out as if begging to be kicked. Well, if you insist. See, this is what I thought the game was going to be like. <laughs> These these action scenes are actually really cool. The air was in the man the, the air that was in the man's lungs squirts out through his nose as his eyes roll back into his head. He crumbles face first onto the ground. Now we just have knife boy left. I'll give you two seconds. Drop the knife. One. Two. The man throws the knife in his hand aside and stumbles backward in a blind panic, trying to escape. And where are you going? I quickly trample down on his foot from above, seal sealing his movement, and then strike hard at the base of his throat with the joint of my right thumb. <laughs> Dane. His throat crushed in the middle of a breath, the man's momentarily compressed trachea sticks, sh uh, sticks shut under the inward pressure from his lungs, rendering breathing temporarily impossible. <laughs> this don't mess with Yuji, holy cow. As the man claws desperately at his throat, his eyes bulge open wide and release a flood of tears. He falls with a flood onto his backside. I don't think we're done with our chat. You have to be a patient kid and listen to what others have to say or you won't get any snacks, okay? Glancing sidewall at the man as he grasps his throat with both hands and flails his legs on the ground, I crouch down and pick up the knife he tossed away. Well, if your throat happens to get cut, you won't be able to get your, eat your snack anyway, I guess. No, don't cut his throat, what the heck. I've got questions. Would you be so kind as to answer? What? Can't talk? Want me to open a hole in your one? It'll release that air pressure so you can breathe nice and easy. Oh, Yuji's kind of creepy. But in a different way than he's been creepy in the past. The man responds to my offer by violently shaking his head from side to side. Don't worry. You've got two perfectly good ones. Getting a hole poked in one won't kill you. As I stand looking down on him with the knife in one hand, the man scrabbles desperately at the ground, trying to put some distance between us. Seriously, where do you think you're going? You want me to make it physically impossible for you to run? Just answer my questions. First question. Who gave you the orders? 
One of you said this was your job, right? But you didn't show any interest in a little girl with money in her hand, so this wasn't just a stick-up. Somebody asked you, right? To beat the shit out of me in particular. Three thousand bucks ain't bad. But also, don't do illegal work. <laughs> Screwed up. Should have talked to him instead of you. Still grasping the knife in my hand, I glance back at the man with the bandana. He's flat on the asphalt, his eyes rolled all the way back in his head, drooling from the mouth. Well, whatever. Next question. Did you come after me knowing who I am? Do you know my name? <laughs> this guy had no idea what he was getting into. Well, that's as expected. The first thing these guys asked me was about the Mahama uniform. That's evidence that they were targeting a male Mahama Academy student rather than Kazumi Yuji. That said, I'm the only male student at Mahama Academy at the moment. Ultimately, I was the specific target. But considering the bunch of clowns they sent, it's hard to think this has any connection to anyone with a grudge related to my job. So who the hell, and for what reason? First things first. Doesn't seem like I'm going to get anything useful out of you, does it? In that case, might as well finish this one off. Wake up Bandana Man and squeeze it out of him. Don't kill him! Don't kill him. He's defenseless. Don't get so worked up. Rest assured, I don't kill people. Well, sometimes they might wish I had by the time I'm through. <laughs> what are you quivering about? You that scared to die? I realize that I'm still gripping the open knife in my hand. Ah, oh, my bad. I'll give this back later. I release the folding knife's lock and shut the blade away with a snap. But I'd recommend not carrying toys like this around. Having one on hand makes you want to use it. With something like this in your pocket, your mouth gets smarter. You start swaggering about, picking stupid fights with people, and if you lose control, you end up doing something that you can't take back. You know what? Yuji has a lot of character faults, but he does talk a lot of good sense at times. He's probably just trying to look cool, but depending on a toy like this to pro depending on a toy like this to prop up your ego seems more pathetic from where I stand. Oh, thank goodness it's the police. The blinding beam of a flashlight shines through the dim alley into my face, and I instinctively shield my eyes. Yeah, yeah. No need to scream. I'm not an old man. My ears work just fine. <laughs> oh, hey, officer! <laughs> That's my line. Have to say, though, the police force in this town really is pretty impressive. Did you hear my scream? <laughs> Please don't take my Girl Scout cookies this time. What's that supposed to mean? Almost sounds like you think of me as that guy who's going to cause trouble sooner or later. Talk about rude. <laughs> I bet there was an ongoing bet at the police station, like, how long before this Kazumi Yuji guy starts causing trouble around town? I give it three months. Nah, I'm gonna give him six months. Come on now, I'm the victim here, you know. <laughs> I'm still holding the knife I took from the man in my hand. Guess I won't be able to talk myself out of this one. Damn it, guess that's that. Makina, no! <laughs> ah, and of course, she has to come back at this exact moment. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, it just happened. Pay up. No. <laughs> when I turn around, I find Makina standing behind me, ice cream cones in both hands. Aww. Huh? Konoko. Yeah, oh, see, no, they no. think she's eight, too. No, she's my classmate, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, that's why you put a stop to that. Um, well... For some reason, I've got the feeling this policeman's mental image of me is getting worse by the second. <laughs> 200 yen? I guess you could buy, like, two candy bars. <laughs> yeah, fine. Don't worry, it's not like I'm getting arrested. I'll be back as soon as I explain the situation, so you go on ahead and head home. 
I drop a hand on Machina's head with a gentle thump and use my other hand to take the ice cream cone she bought for me. <laughs> Thanks for the ice cream! Uh-oh. She wasn't involved. I said I'd come, didn't I? She doesn't have anything to do with it. Go ahead, Machina. I'm not going to die. They're just going to question me. I'm not going off to war. Don't make that face. I'll be back soon. When I give her back a light push, Magana slowly walks away, pausing several times to glance back at me. After watching her disappear around a corner, I turn to face the policeman. <laughs> Even I can be kind to children when the moon strikes me. Yes, see? <laughs> She's eight! <laughs> the policeman points at my hand where I'm holding my carbol ribbon cone. Mind your own business. I sink my teeth into the ice cream Magana bought me. You don't bite ice cream? Oh boy, we're back to the interrogation room. With the snazzy music. And so, I find myself in this sweat box for the second time. Having been through this once already, I've gotten a little used to the place. While the uniformed cop was guiding me here, I looked around the station for familiar faces. <laughs> I noticed the young detective who interviewed me the other day slurping up soba noodles at his desk. How many? This is probably no more than a month after last time. Trying to send a small message of apology for the last time, I smiled and bowed my head lightly in greeting. The undetective scowled back bluntly and spun his chair away from me, still clutching the bull. <laughs> this is the second time, man! Come on now! <laughs> Possibly he's got some idea of my background now, as the gesture seems to be saying, I've got no intention of playing nice with Ichigaya. Either way, it was a firm and unambiguous rejection. With an attitude like that, it's no wonder the police rarely get any civilian cooperation these days. I nearly told them as much, but managed to swallow the words down with my smile. Looking at things from his point of view, I'm definitely nothing but trouble. If he sits down across from me again, I think I might as well come out and give him a vocal apology at least. But betraying my expectations, the person who enters the room is the sly-looking elderly detective I spoke with before my release last time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kazami-san. <laughs> yeah, me in the flesh. What you gonna do about it, old man? Well, times four. I don't know if it's a vocal tick or what, but this detective seems to enjoy repeating that word. But this sort of guy just loves to play the slow-witted old f old man like that. Then suddenly ask you, how many times did I say well just now to probe how mentally focused you are on the conversation? If you respond, don't know, having thrown you off balance, he'll barrage you with sharp to the point questions. This is the sort of old codger you can never let your guard down around. I was the victim of a unilateral assault. I didn't go looking to cause trouble. More importantly, have you ID'd the people who attacked me? Uh -oh. What a bunch of hooligans! Who are they? <laughs> I'd send Christmas cards to their families, apologizing for putting them in jail. I'm not particularly looking for revenge, if that's what you're worried about. <laughs> no, I don't want to kill them. <laughs> Just a bunch of thugs? え、そう考えてもらって間違いありませんな。あの中の一人は地元の暴力団との繋がりもありますが、え、まあ、極めて善良な一般市民ですな。うん。Exemplary, huh? You didn't need to spell that out. And they confess anything as about why they attacked me? Oh, yes. If there's one thing that's all the rage these days, it's net murder. Net murder? It's where you murder people with nets. Net. Guys, I found what is officially the most toxic social media website. <laughs> Assassin Graham. 
実際のところは気に入らない相手の名前を書いて<笑> It's like <laughs> It's like Craigslist but for murder <laughs> 死なない程度に袋叩きにしてくれというのがほとんどだそうなんですがね How was that not pulled from the app store? So they didn't have any idea of my background when they attacked me <laughs> うちの若いのにそのインターネット掲示板とやらを調べさせたのですがあなたの名前は上がっていないそうです<笑> Basically 連中が名前も知らずにあなたを襲ったのは間違いないでしょう Who placed the request? さあ<笑>そこまでは It was Jar Jar is a Sith Lord 8591273 <笑> That doesn't give us much to go off of <笑>一応ハンドルネームって言うんですかね名前のとこにはマオと書かれていたそうですよ何か You know what? It is entirely within the character of Mao Zedong to assassinate people I'm not even surprised Mao? No idea You couldn't trace the IP? ああええなんだかよくわかりませんけどね今うちの若い連中がその辺から調べてるみたいでああプロバイダーああまでは終えたらしいんですがどうにも漫画喫茶から発信されたみたいでね。今何か向かわせとるところです。Hmm, I didn't know Mao Zedong went to manga cafes. What kind of an idiot runs a public net cafe without restrictions on BBS posting in this day and age? Regardless, I don't think there's much hope of finding the criminal among their customers. いやはや。しかし最近は何でもネットですよ。私らジジイにはチンプンカンプンですわ。はは。私らはほれ。コンピューターってやつで動いてます、ね。<笑><笑> That actually was a funny joke. That gag physically hurt. If this was America, I'd sue. ま、何にせよ。That was a good pun. 世の中ですよ。あなたもせいぜい気をつけることですな。<笑> okay, boss. Sorry for the trouble. Continuing this conversation isn't going to get me any more information. I lift myself up off of the cheap folding chair. ああ、カザミさん。まだ帰ってもらっちゃ困るのですよ。I don't have anything but Girl Scout cookies, so stop looking for hard drugs. <笑> hmm? You've already got my statement, right? そのことなんですがね。今回の件を傷害事件として刑事告訴されますか、ね、<笑> Well, they didn't injure me. I, it was the other way around. Not necessary. I haven't suffered anything except the loss of my time and energy. And you also gave Makina $300 to get ice cream with. まあそれがよろしいでしょうな。カザミさん、あなたちょっとやりすぎですよ。<笑>逆に過剰防衛の線で粘られると厄介ですよ。I don't think he went overboard. Like he he incapacitated them, and that was all that was needed. I mean, granted, they also pulled up, and he was Aiming a knife at them, so that probably looked pretty bad. Petasria Tokbets Komuin Boko, Yomia Guzai Tiazdeswa. Otaxan no Soskija, Saiban Hioa, Jibara Nanjanai Deska. Ouch. If they try suing me, I'll have a little talk with my superiors. They, you did say nobody would miss them if they fell off the face of the earth, right? Ooh, quay, quay. The conclusion of what does he know who the Umaku Shorish to Okima show? No, you're wrong, Nick. Cops love donuts, not cookies. Sorry, I'd appreciate that. Next time I stop by, I'll bring a present. <laughs> Elderly Detective is one of the best characters in this game. I wish he was in it more. Turning my back on the vaguely grating laughter of the sly old man, I leave the sweat box. Back to the cape! Well then, how do I explain this one to JB? It's all well and good that the police let me walk, but my problems aren't quite over. This incident must have reached Ichigaya by now, as my direct superior and case officer, JB, will be taking a lot of heat. In fact, she's probably grudgingly kowtowing to the, br to the brass right about now. I let out a short sigh, take my cell phone from my pocket, and turn on the power. In the next moment, with startling timing, it begins to rain. Hi there, JB. Your voice is lovely, as always. I've been charmed out of my senses. Want to get married? Uh oh. My bad. Let's get down to business. To defeat the Huns. <laughs> Different JB. 
担当直入に言うけど次に問題を起こしたら謹慎ねついでに外出と処方物品も規制して強制労働を貸します Oh boy. Hey, JB, did you know there's actually a word for that now? It's called imprisonment. Is that how the grown ups run things in this country? I understand. My bad. No, I don't have an excuse, but there's something I want to say. JB, I love you, and. No, I shouldn't. If I say this, you'll definitely get mad. Okay, here I go. Quit your bitching, fish face! I'll stick that phone so far up your ass you'll feel the ringtone in your colon. Wow! I quickly end the call and turn off the cell phone. JB, you're a truly understanding superior to lend an ear to your subordinate's abuse. How if <laughs> how do you talk to your boss like that and not get fired? Like that that doesn't happen. That's the most unrealistic part of this game. It's all thanks to you that I can vent my stress and enjoy my days in serenity. <laughs> you're still here, Ma Makina. We told you to go back to school. Hmm, Makina, were you waiting for me here? I hope you got more ice cream. I gave you $300 to get ice cream with, so... I see. I dropped my hand on Makina's head with a thud. It's becoming a habit. How to put it, this head is at just the right height to rest your hand on. Aww. Sorry I worried you. When I look closely, Makina's still clutching the paper from her ice cream cone in her hand. She must have taken my I'll be back soon literally and stayed right here the entire time. Uh oh. <laughs> Who do you think you're talking to? There's no way I'd lose to the likes of them. Oh, that's that's true, Goris. I forgot. Yeah, change was for the stock market. <laughs> Hopefully she invested in Bitcoin. Don't want to boast, but uh, the only person who's beat me in a fight is my master. You just worry about living a solid, decent life, and you won't need rescuing. More importantly, let's get back quickly. Amine must be worried. <laughs> yeah, she owes me one. Well, yeah, I think I can handle that much at least. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Makina nods energetically, trots up right next to me, and grabs hold of my left hand. First Amine, now Makina. Why are my hands in such demand lately? Apparently sensing my unspoken complaint, Makina squeezes my hand forcefully. <laughs> See, the interesting thing is, like, the dynamic between Yuji and Makina does not feel romantic at all, which is good. It really does feel like we're basically her older brother, her older sibling, <laughs> or just like her friend. And I, I actually, I like that. I'm glad of that. <laughs> you don't need to squeeze that hard. I'm not going to vanish all of a sudden. I can't make any guarantees. As I pull Makina alone by her strangely warm hand, we set off for the dorm. We walk side by side, our lengthening shadows spreading out across the road. A long time ago, I used to be fascinated and puzzled by the way shadows would grow as the sun began to sink under the horizon. Who explained it to me at that time? I don't think it was my mother. Although I do remember walking hand in hand with my master at sunset, there's no way that woman would have given me a straight answer. Which would leave... Ah, yeah. It was my sister, wasn't it? Bathed in the evening sun, pulled alone by my sister's hand, I pointed at the expanding shadow and asked her, why do shadows get all alone at sunset? The answer she gave in return was overly technical, explaining how the changing of the seasons affected the phenomenon, and at the time I didn't really understand any of it. Used to be. I was the one being pulled alone. <gasps> and now the cycle is continuing. No, it's nothing. 
<laughs> Duly noted. Hadn't thought I'd ever become the sort of person who could take another's hand in mine and lead them home. But there's no guarantee I'll be here to do the same tomorrow. By this time tomorrow evening, the hand that's holding hers may be gone. That was ominous. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, as much as we'd like to see this weird pose of Michiru's, I think we're gonna end the stream there. I don't like I don't like playing a whole bunch of visual levels all in a row. So I learned that with Clonod. By the time I started streaming for like around three hours, my voice starts going, and then it affects the way I can talk the rest of, for the next few days. So I'm gonna end the stream there. Thanks everyone for joining in. The vods will be up on YouTube hopefully the coming week. Yeah, thanks for joining in, Nick. Have a great rest of your weekend. And a good coming work week. Also, I'm planning on doing a 100 follower uh, special on Twitch. I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but it'll probably be this week. Maybe Monday or Wednesday. So, keep an eye out for that. See y'all, have a great day, and God bless.